So welcome to the ninth and last edition of the 2021 Physics Matter Colloquia Series to build up more capacity around the Middle East and other international developing community. So this Physics for Development Series is organized by the Forum on International Physics, the FIP, at the American Physics Society, the APS. So following our first anniversary Physics Matter Colloquium, which brought us two weeks ago to the pristine Arctic for the exceptional uh, scientific expedition, uh, we are now back to discover more about the warm Palestine education landscape. So last uh, October 28, so we had the privilege to listen to Professor Galeb Natu who gave us a complete explanation of the German governance and the Helmut Foundation organization, which are generously supporting initiatives like the German-Palestine Scientific Bridge. So now let's discover today, so from <coughs> and thanks to Professor Maïsa Abdoussa, the high education in Palestine. So then we'll continue our scientific expedition by stepping on that bridge, connecting more bright mind with the special guests that you see today. So for a forum gathering scientists with various backgrounds, including science diplomacy, and a lot of them are without border and without frontier. So the motivation of this forum is really to transcend any boundary and to build robust and sustainable bridge. So we also recall that few of our guests today have attended the June Physics Matter event where Professor Giram, Giram Kamel sorry, described the new adventure of the Middle East woman scientist, thanks to the SESAMI. So that special and natural forum, so the, the FIP, so following uh, uh, Giram's uh, presentation, brought some insight in the capacity for our FIP team to hold such a type of forum. So indeed, so we are the Forum of International Physics in welcoming Global Hub and global scientists as well. So building up capacity with international scientific research and innovation and creating an international spirit community and a new collaboration, this is what is encrypted in our Physics for Development colloquia series. So let's introduce the member of our panel and the guests today. So first, so Andrea Lossi, who is the scientific director of the Sesame Light Source in Jordan. And for the Forum of International Physics, so my name is Christine Darr. I work at the European Spallation Source, so in Sweden, and I'm the vice chair of the FIP. And you have here as well with us, so Alan Berg, who is from Le Salamos, who is the chair currently of uh, the FIP, and Joe Nimela from the ICTP in uh, Trieste. So the guest that uh, we have the honor uh, today to listen is Professor so Murad Abi, Abusa, sorry. Uh, Professor Abusa is the vice president for the academic affairs so since August 2019 and the former dean of the Faculty of Science at the Arab American University. So which university located in Jenin in the West Bank of the Palestinian territory is of uh, a first private Palestinian university founded in 2000 in collaboration with uh, the, uh, Calif the, the California State University and uh, the Utah State University. But I guess that he will speak maybe a bit more on that, but this just to underline the, the spirit of collaboration as well. So we have, um, so Professor Abdoussa, he obtained his uh, education masters of uh, physics in 92 from uh, the North Cyprus from the Eastern Mediterranean University, where then he get his PhD on photonic uh, in Jordan. So this presentation uh, has been as well, or will be followed by the forum that uh, we are uh, mentioning earlier, who will, which will include, uh, so Erkan Alb, who is a senior scientist at the APS, so the Advanced Photon Source in the Argon National Lab, and who is one of the pillars of the Sesame Light Source. So we have as well among us, so Bernard Amadei, who is the founding president of Engineer Without Borders in the US. We have the honor also to have Zafra Lerman, so the president of the Malta Conference Foundation. 
We have also then our prestigious so guests from, from October 28, Professor Galeb Natu, director of the Yulish Institute, who provided as well ESS with a lot of essential in-kind support. So we couldn't have, unfortunately, with us, so Kate Shaw, who is responsible for physics without frontier, but I can give as well some insight into um, the work that uh, the ICTP as well has done, and, and, and certainly also we can have at the time of the forum, uh, Joe uh, Nimela as well to uh, complement all of that. So then without further ado, so I leave uh, the screen so to uh, Professor Abusa, and then we can start at the beginning of the presentation. So hopefully we can, super. And okay. you can put it in full mode, yes. Okay, thank you very much uh, for offering me this opportunity. Uh, to highlight some aspects and uh, general idea about the higher education in Palestine. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like uh, to present or to highlight some general uh, remarks about higher education in Palestine. Actually, higher education in Palestine uh, started nearly 15, 50 years ago, let's say uh, at the beginning of 1970s. Uh, Palestinian universities have increased their interest in scientific research in the recent years, let's say in the former 10 years. Uh, the universities allocate a very small budget uh, for scientific research. Uh, also, there are weak strategic, uh, strategies that guide uh, academic or scientific research in Palestine uh, in directed tracks. I mean, there are no general uh, areas uh, to focus on uh, in research. Uh, also, collaboration between universities is very weak, uh, and most of the research is conducted individually or uh, in very small research groups. Actually, uh, we have a small number of professors at our universities. Uh, Let's say, as an example, uh, for physics departments uh, at the uh, Palestinian universities, on average, we have 10 professors working in different areas. <coughs> you can find one person working in laser, another working in uh, thin films, a third one working in theoretical physics, the fourth one in computational. So it's not easy to form a research group with a large, large number of professors <coughs> uh, or scientists. Also, uh, the graduate programs uh, in Palestinian University started uh, started uh, uh, ten years ago, before ten years, uh, let's say before a twenty ten year, there were very very small uh, number of graduate programs, and they were uh, uh, concentrated on humanities and arts uh, for uh, for engineering, for sciences and medical uh, fields. Uh, uh, graduates, uh, graduate programs started almost uh, just 10 years ago. That's why we don't have uh, previously uh, graduate students and professors working in the same field uh, is very restricted now. Okay. Also, uh, some of the research is conducted through cooperation with developed countries like uh, what we have now with Jewish Institute with the uh, uh, Quebec uh, strict in Canada. And there are other examples, but they are actually uh, done uh, individually, researcher to researcher. Some of our researchers can leave the university for one or two years uh, to do a research in one of the uh, developed uh, countries' universities. Uh, there are no scientific research centers in Palestine. And in recent years, uh, actually, the Palestine Academy for Science and Technology has made a great effort by re-establishing scientific societies. Uh, I'm uh, talking about uh, three to four years and building international cooperation bridges, like, uh, like uh, what I mentioned about the uh, German Palestine bridge and the Canadian Palestine bridge. Okay, also I, would like to present some data about uh, the higher education institutes. 
Uh, the number of accredited institutes in Palestine is 51, distributed as uh, 16 tra traditional or national universities, uh, two open uh, teaching system universities, 16 uh, college universities, and 17 community colleges, uh, distributed uh, between West Bank and Gaza Strip. We have 32 uh, higher education institutes in the West Bank and 17 in Gaza Strip. Okay, uh, for uh, uh, number of students enrolled, for example, for the academic year 2020-2021, uh, uh, the total number was uh, 57,000 uh, uh, students, 60% per, uh, uh, females and 40% for males. And they are distributed, as you see, 66% uh, 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 of them in the national universities and this smaller number than other types of universities. Uh, this is the number of the students enrolled for the current year, but uh, for the total number of enrolled students, we have a total of, uh, let's say, uh, 214,000 or 15,000 students in all Palestinian universities. And they are distributed, as you see, most of them are in the national or regional universities. Uh, 69%. Okay, and this uh, slide shows the number of graduate students. Uh, as you see, 63% uh, of them are uh, females and 37 are males. And they are distributed, as you see, uh, according to the type of, uh, of uh, institution. Uh, and uh, you notice that, uh, as I mentioned the previous, the 64% uh, of them are graduated from national or traditional universities. Okay. Uh, according to staff, uh, we have a total of 17,000 almost classified according to their job classification. As you see, uh, around 42% are teaching academics uh, and 3.7% uh, administrative academics. And, uh, and you see the, uh, the rest uh, of this table for administrative staff, office staff, teaching and research assistant. Uh, okay. Uh, the main, uh, the most important one is the uh, teaching academic. There are 7,103 uh, professor, let's say, or teacher. Uh, and also in the below table, they are distributed uh, according to the type of university as 76% in the national or traditional universities, 11% in the university colleges, 7% in the community colleges, and in the urban education, 5.4%. And also you can see, you can see this data uh, distributed better, uh, stuff according to job classification and according to the uh, certificate. Uh, this is uh, from the Ministry of Higher Education and Scientific Research. I mentioned all these numbers previously. A number of institutions is 51, uh, scholarships uh, uh, 99 uh, uh, annually, I mean. Graduate students totally 41,000. Registered students, uh, they are studying currently in all universities 214,000. Uh, and the new enrolled students for this academic year is around 57,000 students. Uh, these are just the names of the Palestinian universities. Okay, we have a total of 20, uh, I mentioned 20 of the uh, largest universities in Palestine in both uh, West Bank and Gaza Strip. Also, these are the university colleges. Uh, in both West Bank and Gaza Strip. And these are just the names of these colleges. Uh, most of these uh, colleges uh, are offering, uh, let's say, two to up to 10 uh, different uh, degrees. I mean, 
different areas. Okay. Uh, also, in the second part, uh, I would, would like to make a small tour to some of the Palestinian universities. I will not mention all of them, uh, but just to have an idea. Uh, first of all, I present uh, my home university, the Arab American University. Uh, for academic programs, we have 20 bachelor uh, programs, 40 master programs, and 10 PhD programs. But as I mentioned previously, most of these PhD and master programs are very new. Let's say uh, up to five years only. Before uh, five years ago, uh, we have only maybe six to seven master programs, and there was just one program, joint program with Indiana State University in management information systems. For the enrolled students, uh, we have uh, approximately 13,000 students, uh, 12,000 in the bachelor uh, level, and we have 1,000 graduate uh, students. For the scientific research, annually, uh, uh, we publish more than one, 100 papers in uh, peer-reviewed uh, international journals. And we have a budget of approximately a half million US dollars. For the scholarships and financial aid, uh, the total amount of scholarships and financial aid uh, granted by the university in the academic year, let's see, 18 19, is uh, around 9 million US dollars. Uh, also, we have a lot of research awards uh, offered by the university for uh, both uh, students and the staff. Uh, for example, the Arab American University Award for Excellence in Scientific Research, $2,000. It's an annual award. Also, the best published research awards in the Journal of Arab American University, around $20,000. Uh, also, it's an annual uh, award. And uh, also, we have uh, Engineers Zuhar Hijawi Award, around $10,000. Uh, uh, but we offer uh, this. Uh, uh, this award uh, in five different fields. So we have a total of 50,000 US dollars, and uh, it is offered to students uh, for their graduation projects. Okay, also I mentioned here one of the well known uh, Palestinian universities, Birzeit University, and it's also one of the oldest universities. They started uh, around 19, uh, mid of 70s. Uh, they have a total number of 15,000 students. Uh, and you see all the data. You see the female percentage 62%, and the male percentage is 38%. Uh, and you have uh, the last line a uh, number of academic programs uh, for both graduate and undergraduate levels are more than 100 programs. Uh, uh, also, uh, they have 7.7 uh, .7 million US dollars uh, as uh, scholarships and uh, financial aid to students. Also here, I mentioned Al Najah National University. It is, it is the biggest university in Palestine uh, in terms of the number of students and the staff. They have around 24,000 uh, students uh, and more than uh, 1,200 uh, professors. And also, they offer a large number of uh, uh, okay, uh, the students and the professors. Okay, uh, also they have more than uh, 160 programs and they publish annually uh, more than 400 uh, papers. Okay, you can see in these slides uh, some short ideas about other universities. Hebrew, Hebrew University, it is the oldest uh, Palestinian university, but actually, uh, they used to offer only humanities and arts. Uh, they just started to offer some uh, programs in the recent years in medicine, engineering, and in sciences. Uh, Al-Aqsa University is one of the uh, Gaza Strip universities, and Islamic University of Gaza, it is the biggest and the oldest university in Gaza Strip. Okay, here also we have Bethlehem University. Uh, and Al-Quds Open University, uh, no, this is Al-Quds University, also it's one of the oldest universities in Palestine. You notice that uh, on average we have 10 to 15,000 uh, uh, 
a number, a total number of students, and the faculty, let's say, uh, uh, in the range of 500 uh, staff. Okay, this is also the University of Palestine. Okay. Uh, scientific research in Palestine, uh, as I mentioned previously, I repeat it again, uh, and I take uh, Arab American University as an example. As I mentioned previously, uh, the university gives great attention to scientific research and they plan an annual budget every year for almost uh, uh, 230,000 uh, Jordanian dinar as awards, prizes, and projects inside and outside the university. Uh, as I mentioned previously, uh, the, the budget of, for scientific research is very small compared to the to total budget of the universities. Uh, as far as I know, I believe that the budget for scientific research is the largest uh, in Arab American University. It is just uh, around uh, 500,000 US dollars annually, which is very small compared to the total budget of the university, which is more than uh, $25 million a year. Okay, and these are some photos from, uh, we have two campuses actually, the main campus in Jenin on the left, uh, and uh, we have another campus in Ramallah, and these are some labs in physics, biology, chemistry, and uh, in uh, molecular biology and medicine. Okay, I, I also, uh, I would like uh, to mention uh, some uh, few words about the Palestine Academy for Science and Technology. Uh, which is a national independent uh, self-governing institution acting as a catalyst for the advancement of science, technology, and innovation. Uh, there are, uh, you can visit the site of Palest, Palestine Academy for Science and Technology, and you can find over there all, uh, all uh, information about it. But as a strategy goals, uh, the academy goals and functions are, uh, in essence, uh, geared towards developing, coordinating, and promoting science and technology and scientific research and innovation. Uh, also, I would like to mention uh, two uh, points about the palace. One, the first one is the scientific societies. As I mentioned previously, scientific uh, societies play a significant role in the advancement of teaching, learning, and research in various disciplines. The academy has undertaken the initiative to catalyze and support the formation of national disciplinary and multidisciplinary scientific societies and the clusters in Palestine. Uh, and this is the, done in coordination with all Palestinian universities. Uh, within the first phase of this uh, uh, initiative, supported by uh, Friedrich Newman Foundation uh, in uh, Jerusalem in Palestine, uh, Palestinian scientific societies in mathematics, physics, and chemistry, biology, and agriculture Sciences were formed, uh, let's say, uh, four years ago, and societies and other sectors are in the uh, pipeline uh, this year. Also, I would like to mention uh, about the Palestine uh, German Science Bridge. Uh, there was a lecture by uh, Professor Ghalib Natur in details. But in short words, uh, BGSB is the uh, most important bridge uh, in Palestine. It was launched in the year 2016 uh, uh, by a signing agreement between the Academy and the Jewish Research uh, Center uh, with support from the German Ministry of Higher Education. Okay, uh, this is a five year project, and we are planning uh, with the Professor Ghali maybe to extend this project for uh, the new coming years. And actually, more than 80 Palestinian students benefited from this project. Uh, half of them are PhD stu students, uh, and uh, a lot of uh, Palestinian professors are visiting Jewish and having uh, good uh, research, uh, uh, I mean cooperation in research with, uh, uh, with German, uh, Germanian professors at the uh, Jewish Institute. Okay, uh, also we have another bridge with the chemical science bridge, Palestinian chemical science bridge. Uh, but this is, uh, it was launched in the year 2017 uh, by signing an agreement with the Academy and the Fonds uh, de Quebec, uh, Canada. 
uh, this is restricted. It is not look like uh, that with the Germany because uh, this this is restricted to professors uh, for short visits, uh, usually from three to six months. They can visit uh, different. Uh, one uh, out of 18 universities in uh, Quebec, and they can do research within this period. Uh, thank you very much uh, for your listening, and I hope that you have got a general idea about higher education in this time. Thank you. Thank you very much, huh, Professor Roussa. So it was uh, very educative to see all those. I mean, the, I didn't realize how. I mean, numerous as well, those university could be. So it's very good as well to see the distribution of uh, so women and men as well. So there are a lot of uh, very interesting topics that then we can uh, start to discuss about now. So maybe just before, if we can, or if you want, because I didn't mention to have any additional questions or from our attendees. So uh, each of you could use as well the little uh, question and answer, which is at the bottom of your screen. So feel free to add up questions there. So address us so to so Professor Abusa or to uh, each of uh, the, the different members that we have uh, in our forum and in our panel. So we see that we already have some questions for you. So Professor by Erkan Hall. So Erkan, if you wanna ask your question. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you for this presentation, Moyed. This is very helpful. I was wondering if you have also some numbers about the Palestinian students in the Israeli universities, both undergraduate and graduate. Actually, we have very small number of students. In the undergraduate level, usually they don't accept Palestinian students. Uh, there are a small number of students uh, in the graduate levels for master and PhD, for example, in Hebrew University. Uh, and also, uh, you know, it's not easy to get, uh, uh, to be enrolled in, uh, in any university in Israel. But some students uh, are doing that. Uh, I believe that uh, the largest uh, number of Palestinian students studying at Israeli universities are from, uh, from Al-Quds. Because you know, also technically, it's not easy to get a permission uh, to study in Israel. You have to get a permission uh, to, to go over there, to be there. It's not easy uh, for the age of the students around the 20 or 25. But as I mentioned, in the graduate level, yes, there is a small number of students. But uh, actually, most, the, the, uh, most of Palestinian students are studying at Palestinian universities. Uh, there is uh, maybe, let's say, 15 to 20 percent are studying outside Palestine, mainly in Jordan, uh, small number in Europe and in the United States of America and Canada. But I think that the total number of outside students is not uh, more than 15 to 20 percent. Thank you. Especially these years. Actually, before this, uh, let's say 20 years ago, maybe uh, half number of students were studying outside Palestine. But nowadays, because all Palestinian universities are offering uh, programs in different areas and in different levels, I mean, in undergraduate, in master, in, in, in PhD levels, uh, and for economical and other issues, most of them are studying uh, in Palestine. Thank you. Good. So Bernard, you have also a question or a comment. So Bernard, huh? Oh, hi. Thank you, Christine. And um, uh, nice to meet you, uh, Professor Abu Sahab. And uh, thank you for your presentation about um, the research and uh, the higher education in, in Palestine. I have a quick question first, and then I will ask questions later on. So you have that great talent in, in, in Palestine. And I've witnessed that um, been, being from the field of engineering, um, the great engineering schools that are, uh, that are in Palestine. I'm very familiar with Al-Quds and, and, um, and Birzeit University. Um, yes. my, my question is, how do you retain the talent in Palestine. I mean, my experience with um, when I have traveled in that region for about the past 15 years, 
And uh, uh, one of my colleagues, uh, Ahmed Rabaya, was an engineer, studied engineers with Abad Palestine. And one of the things we talked about a lot uh, is the retention of engineers. Many great engineers from Palestine end up working in the Gulf. How do we retain uh, the, the, um, the brain, the brain power in Palestine? Actually, uh, uh, you visit Palestine and you may know, uh, we don't have enough uh, number of vacancies in Palestine. Uh, so a large number of our uh, graduates are working in the Gulf. A large number of the graduates. Actually, maybe let's say 30% of our graduates are working only in Palestine because we don't have a large number of vacancies in Palestine in, in, dif in different fields. Maybe the best field is, uh, let's say, medical sector in nursing and in, in medicine and uh, dentistry in, in all these fields. Uh, we have uh, enough vacancies and most of our graduates are working in Palestine, but in other fields, for example, in engineering and in these fields, most of our graduates are, are traveling to, to Gulf countries, to Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates, to Kuwait and other uh, Gulf countries uh, because they cannot uh, easily find a job in Palestine. Thank you. So if maybe I can also take the opportunity to ask you to unshare the screen, that would be really uh, maybe useful if you don't mind. So Professor okay. Abusa, voilà. yes. And indeed on the same topic, could it be that as well by maintaining or the way to maintain as well the student, this is connected as well to the industrialization as well. So is, a, sorry, somebody, it's okay. <laughs> so, uh, is there a way as well for maintaining the, the, the students or the graduated students as well in Palestine by working further as well or having a better connection between the university as well and uh, the, the enterprise or the developing or inviting them as well to develop their own startup or to try to have as well those actions for retaining uh, the different students in Palestine? Is there any effort done in that direction? So we see that the image is frozen, but hopefully the connection is okay. No, no, I, I actually, uh, my connection is unstable. I could not hear most of the question. Sorry. So yeah, the, the question was to try to see how much connection does it exist between the university and uh, the industry? And do you encourage uh, those new students that graduated to then became or start up some, some different initiative in order to have as well for Palestine as well, a growing quantity of uh, knowledge assimilated to industrialization? That's a way maybe as well to maintain as well and to make sure that the economy for the social economical point of view of Palestine to, to gain even more from uh, the, uh, the uh, academics. Huh? Yes. Okay. Uh, actually, in the previous years, the, the, there were no relations with the, with the industry uh, strict in Palestine uh, because I mentioned most of the graduates uh, were traveling to Gulf countries, but uh, the, the need or the vacancies in Gulf countries is decreasing with time, uh, is dec dec decreasing exponentially. And uh, uh, as far as I know, uh, most of the universities started just a few years ago, let's say two to three years, uh, uh, connecting with the industry strict and arranging the number of, of the graduates or uh, the number of students that uh, they accept at each university. Uh, because we are, we are expecting to face a problem in, in, in the few coming years. Uh, because most of our graduates ha have to stay in Palestine and it's not easy to, to find jobs. So most of the universities are working to, to let's say, to, to open in new programs, close uh, some old programs, uh, uh, something which is related to the needs uh, of the market in Palestine. Okay, very good. Yeah, indeed, those junior enterprises quite often are a very positive aspect as well to foresee that. Very good. So, Alan, so we have a, um, you have a question? Well, first, an, first, an observation. Uh, 
I think it's remarkable that a, uh, a population of 5 million has 51 institutes of, uh, of higher learning. This is, really, uh, this is really fascinating to me. Uh, I um, wanna ask about the role of societies in this, in this uh, growth phase that you're in, uh, particularly the science societies. Uh, can you focus on uh, physics and perhaps name the societies that are involved in, in, in the activities um, as well as the, the uh, number of members, that kind of thing? Okay, yes, you are right. We have a large number of institutes. Uh, let's say about 50 institutes in Palestine. Uh, actually, for the uh, uh, science societies, uh, as I mentioned in my presentation, uh, they re established just uh, two to three years ago. There mm -hmm. were some uh, scientific societies, let's say 15 or 20 years ago, they started. They stopped after one or two years. Uh, the first trials were started from Birzeit University, uh, actually because of uh, many political uh, problems, intifada, and all this stuff. Uh, they stopped and they did nothing. Uh, now the Palestine Academy for Science and Technology re-established these societies just two to three years ago. We started some activities like uh, uh, for example, an annual conference in uh, uh, new trends or aspects in physics and mathematics. Uh, we have some conferences in chemistry and biology, but you, you, you know also because of the pandemic, uh, most of the institutes in Palestine closed uh, for more than one year and we were teaching, uh, uh, teaching online using Zoom and all this stuff. So that's why uh, the age of these uh, scientific societies is, is very small. They just, we just started two to three years ago because of the pandemic, we didn't continue, but we did some very small number of activities. Also, societies face uh, financial problems. Uh, they don't have budget from the government, neither from the government, nor from the industry or, uh, or, or other uh, supporters. Uh, so I believe that when the, uh, the coronavirus pandemic uh, the situation gets better. We have to think about uh, getting financial support from from government, from industry, uh, and from different places, uh, so as to to be able uh, to start some activities. Thank you. Very good. And uh, so, Joe, as well. So you had a question or comment? Yeah, very nice talk. I um, I was interested in the travel programs, the exchange. So you, there are some students going to Quebec and, and others uh, for three to six months. Um, so were these uh, to complete PhD? Maybe maybe you said it, but I didn't understand it. Were these to complete PhD work? Uh, was it really integral to that, like a sandwich program? Uh, and do you have any information? I know that with COVID, probably no visits took place, but do you have any information from previous years uh, as to whether students maintain the uh, collaborations or contacts with the laboratories where they went? Okay. Yes, yes. For, for the Canadian, of, for the Quebec Palestine uh, bridge, as I mentioned, we have short visits for professors from this three to six months. Uh, I believe that we have 50 researchers visited uh, Quebec in the last uh, five years. And most of them are connected with the, the university uh, or, or with the labs where they worked previously. Uh, some, uh, they have, uh, let's say, individual relations with their professors, and they mm -hmm. uh, visited uh, Quebec uh, another times. Uh, the case for Germany is a little bit different because, as I mentioned, we have exchange of students in the bachelor level, in the master. Uh, the, uh, some of them, they do their total master or PhD. In, in Germany, in, in Jewish Institute or other universities uh, in, in that area. Okay, thanks. So maybe as well, Caleb and Andrea, and then we have uh, indeed two questions as well from the audience. Huh? Okay. It's my turn. 
Yes, please go ahead. Okay, thank you. You have the privilege. I just yes. wanted I just wanted to make some comments uh, or try to give answers to the questions that I heard until now. So to the topic of retention and uh, prevention of brain drain, uh, you are right. You need the industry. You you need the institutions uh, that absorb the educated graduates. Uh, you need the policy, you need the strategy, supporting research and so on. And all these topics um, are missed in the Palestinian areas. Yeah? Uh, so there are some starting points, there are some intentions, uh, but many of these things are needed, are not, they are not in place yet. Uh, and a small remark, maybe you, you um, could see my presentation last time. So our main motivation with the Palestinian German Science Bridge is to help uh, establish such research infrastructures that can absorb the Palestinian graduates. Yeah? Uh, one remark to the high number. So my explanation, sometimes I think this has to do with a special situation where the cities of the Palestinian West Bank and Gaza Strip are under occupation with movement restriction. So if you live in Nablus, you cannot go to the university in Jerusalem, even if it's only 30 kilometers away. Uh, or if you live in Ramallah, you cannot go to Jenin and so on. So every city has its own university. So this is uh, one other, other remark that uh, was asked or was mentioned before. Yeah, so these were, were a few notices, few remarks I wanted just to give as comment to the questions. Thank you. Indeed, and, and you copy that, uh, the fact that uh, the many, numer I mean, the numerosity as well of, uh, of the university are really depending as well of this uh, no possibility to move in an easy way from uh, one city to the other one. So the, the mobility is one of the, the big issues as well. But still we see quite large number as well of students, which is uh, like encouraging. So then to build up as well this, uh, this, uh, this country. But as you said, indeed, and it will be a very interesting point uh, that hopefully, uh, so Bernard will come as well, the multidisciplinarity as well that will be needed in order to build up as well a sustainable model for the case of Palestine. I think like what you did with the bridge, uh, so uh, yeah, this is really fundamental to try to transfer this kind of know-how and to identify the different steps as well so that it could be like, um, I mean, retaining uh, all those uh, right mind that comes out of your university. Yes. Really important. So then we have uh, maybe from Andrea, from the point of view of the Sesame, I guess this is also very important. Yeah, to have your opinion or your question. Your mic is still muted. Just trying to unmute it. You have a problem with your microphone. Huh? Okay, yeah. no, I am muted, sorry. <laughs> I don't know why it, it was not working. So, uh, okay, uh, I wanted to say that uh, uh, Sesame is actually a, uh, in, in part, a Palestinian facility because it's uh, Palestine is one of the members of Sesame. And uh, um, I think it would be uh, it would be important to start uh, some kind of uh, PhD program together with Palestine in order to have uh, uh, students coming here for uh, a few months uh, or half half a year to uh, in, to include uh, uh, the activities of Sesame within the educational system in in Palestine. Be, um, would be beneficial for, for on both sides of the Jordan River. I mean, uh, uh, after all, the, the the place where Sesame is sitting uh, is traditionally, I know, more more related uh, uh, to uh, to Nablus than to Amman. Uh, so it 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 should enter in the 
in the possibilities uh, to come here and to have uh, uh, research uh, uh, use this uh, the the, uh, the 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 many possibilities uh, being a synchrotron it has uh, uh, <laughs> be used by chemists by physicists uh, by archaeologists uh, by many different kind of uh, of uh, uh, of uh, researchers, so uh, it's a, it's a chance that uh, uh, has to be taken uh, uh, in the future. What do you think? Yes, yes, uh, I'm hearing you. Yes, I, I believe that uh, right, and uh, uh, we uh, I have a small project with Sisami for one of my students, and she visited uh, Sisami uh, last month. Uh, and yep. I think yes, uh, we can benefit from a uh, system in, in, in some projects. Uh, uh, I don't have much information about system. Uh, one of my colleagues uh, is the representative of uh, our university in this project. Uh, and I, I, you are right, in, uh, especially in physics, we can benefit from system. And we have now a PhD program in physics, and uh, we are planning uh, uh, to do uh, uh, to offer the opportunity for one or two of our students uh, to do some uh, or part of their uh, uh, PhD thesis uh, in this Wonderful. Yes, this is exactly what I am aiming at. Yeah. And, and it could be by sharing as well information digitally as well somehow maybe Andrea just to make sure that the information is uh, uh, distributed among all the different students with the different discipline because this is very important to make sure that they know indeed if uh, um, all those different capabilities as well is are not uh, identified it's uh, it would be it would be a bit of a loss. And somehow this is connected to one of the questions that we have from the audience asking in terms of the, the, the domain. So where the research field as well, that the particularly as well shining for the Palestinian University. You had named some of them. Are there some that are brighter than the others? Like you spoke about the agriculture, it could be something fundamental because then there is a cross correlation with what you are doing as well at the CESAM from what I remember. For instance, it could be like looking at some uh, direction in terms of discipline that you excel in or by some dynamic student that you have in some of those courses that could then uh, develop as well for the PhD, some, some research there. Are there specific disciplines, some research field in which you would gain a lot? Professor Boussa? Yes, I, I, I didn't hear you very well, sorry, your question. So the question from the website indeed was like uh, any research field where the Palestinian University are especially bright. And then by that, are there some that could then relate to some potential measurement or, or, or beam time as well that could be used with the sesame? Uh, 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 as you know, I don't know uh, too many details about CSME, uh, what are the type of research uh, uh, in details uh, which can be done over there. Uh, but as far as I know, for physics students, yes, we have a graduate program in physics, and Najah University also has a graduate program, I mean master and PhD programs. Uh, there is uh, some uh, programs in master degree in Al Quds University and Bizdud University, uh, and uh, I believe that they can benefit from system. But for other uh, for other areas, I don't have uh, much idea. Actually, there is there is a committee in Palestine, uh, and all universities are represented in this committee. But I can't uh, I, I don't have enough idea about the system and all fields of research over there. If I, if I may add a word, uh, Kristen, can I? Uh, Dr. Abu Sa, I would, I would like to note that sesame is not just for physics. Yes, I, a, I know, but I don't have details. For, yes. No, no, it's just for, not just for physics from science point of view, but yes. also it's important from engineering point of view. 
because there yeah. are plenty of opportunities for electrical engineers, mechanical engineers, and, and computer software people mm -hmm. to get involved at SESAMI because uh, SESAMI is heavily undermanned at the moment. There, is, there are not enough people and talented Palestinians are welcome to apply for jobs as well as um, look for opportunities with, through exchange programs to come and join at SESAMI. Uh, we have raised uh, world-class accelerator physicists out of Palestine through yes. SESAMI in the last 20 years. Some of them yes. are directors now at SESAMI. Some of them are abroad uh, doing good work. So one should not consider SESAMI just as a place where you come and do your PhD thesis in, in chemistry or physics, but more importantly, you could consider as a training facility for high-level engineers and high-level computer scientists. Okay. Thank you very much. Very good. So that's a, a good welcome. So I, just before, so I give the, the voice maybe to Zafra. I just mentioned because it could be interesting for you as well, Zafra. The question that we have from Kathleen Morgan, so was that to, so, so thank you, and then to that you show as well that the study that a lot of women who are involved, so as students as Palestinian universities. So is this because the men are more likely to go abroad to study, or is it just like because they are likely multiple academic degree as well that they can gain in, uh, in Palestine? So the diversity as well of the academy. So why the 62%, I think this is what you had. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is really yeah. impressive, like what we have seen in Iran. It's very uh, encouraging to see that women can really be interested to study, but as well, not only physics. Yes, uh, as you mentioned, this is one of the factors, but this is not the main factor. Yes, most of the students studying abroad are, are males, but I believe that uh, the main reason is not that. The main reason is... Uh, uh, is finding a vacancy or a job after graduation from the university. So a lot of males, they started uh, searching for jobs after their high school uh, or maybe a normal diploma for two years after the, the high school. That's why most of a uh, large uh, number of females are studying at the university because for the males, they are trying to, to find jobs uh, uh, after the high school directly. Because uh, some of them believe that it's not easy to find a job after studying at the university. So he uh, says that while I'm going to spend four or five years at the university, then I uh, cannot find a job related to my study or, or, or my uh, field of study. So I will start finding a job uh, direct after the high school. And actually, this uh, increased number of uh, females ratio, uh, appeared, uh, especially in the, in the last years, I believe that 10 years ago, the number of males were larger than females. Uh, maybe five or six years ago, it, uh, it was the same, 50%, 50%. But the increased number of uh, females uh, is mainly due to this reason. It's not easy to find a job in Palestine or in the Arabic area after a graduation. And uh, uh, some of the females try to find uh, vacancies or job in industry or in other uh, areas other than uh, education at universities. They could start their own business as well. Yes, women. yes. Or, or they or, would have yes. management, yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. Very good. So then Zafra, so I don't know if uh, you had something in this line. So I, it would be wonderful to hear from I your side. I just wanted to mention uh, what the Malta Conferences Foundation is doing, because I think the most important thing is to have efforts from all sides to improve science and research and innovation and entrepreneurship in Palestine. Uh, at the Malta Conferences that uh, last five day, where people are together for 24 hours, a day we have Palestinian students that we bring them to Malta and they have the chance to interact with Nobel laureates one-to-one, -one, eating with them dinner, lunch or breakfast and get a lot of input into their research and then they can continue to communicate with this uh, distinguished 
uh, scientists. We have on our board two Palestinians that are now distinguished professors in the U.S. Omar Farah, that I realized that he asked a question. He's at Northwestern University. And Moel Najjar, that is the, in the University of Southern California. And I know that they make a tremendous effort to keep in touch with the Palestinian uh, students. As a result of the Malta conferences, we had several Palestinian students doing their PhD at the Weizmann Institute of Science in Israel, that is considered one of the best research institute, if, yeah. and even professors from Palestine spending sabbatical a whole year at the Weizmann Institute of Science. Uh, there are a lot of collaborations that are going on. We have hundreds of people that participated in the Malta conferences, and there is a lot of collaborations that are going on uh, on different subjects. Uh, there are uh, at the Arava Institute, for example, in Israel, that the head of this institute is a Palestinian. Uh, there are in every class one third of the students are Palestinian because this is the requirement that they have there. One third Palestinian, one third Israelis, and one third Jordanians. Uh, I am the only chemist in this audience and I want to thank uh, APS for inviting me uh, to participants in a lot of their lectures and panels. We are working now very hard to try to establish an American Chemical Society chapter in Palestine where this will bring the American Chemical Society is the largest, most influential scientific society in the world with more than 150,000 members, but at least 25% are foreigners. And now there are chapters in many countries in the Middle East. And we are working very hard to try to establish a chapter like that in Palestine that will help a lot uh, with all the resources that the American Chemical Society has and with interacting with other ACS uh, chapters that are all over the Middle East. By the way, because we talked about Sesame uh, at the Malta conferences, uh, uh, several years ago, a Nobel laureate professor from Taiwan uh, offered six fellowships for a whole year to Middle Eastern. Uh, it was, I think, a Palestinian and Jordanian to spend a year in the synchrotron in Taiwan, all paid for them so they can be helpful to the Sesame a project. So there are a lot of efforts, but I think not everybody knows what each group is doing. And this is why we cannot combine our effort. I have to give a lecture and I wish I could show you the PowerPoint. In one of the pictures, there is a, a Palestinian student standing and explaining her posture and you can see in the background, distinguished scientists and Nobel laureates all concentrated listening to her. This gives a student like that, a woman uh, giving a lecture to all distinguished scientists and Nobel laureates, tremendous contacts and tremendous self-confidence. So I would like to collaborate with you to get people from your university to come to the Malta conferences. So this is what I just wanted to mention, the statistics that you showed about women, it's true all over the Middle East that the number of women in universities is much higher than men, 66%. In Iran, I think it's even higher. The problem comes, 
as you show in the faculties, they are only 33%. And this is the effort we should uh, try to have more women in faculties in Palestine. But the same problem was uh, 20 years ago in the US, there were no women faculty in a lot of universities in physics and chemistry. So we have to still make an effort to bring the women into the position after they finish their study. And we are working very hard to help women. We have a special women's forum that was uh, formed and is helping the, with advice and other things to help women to go above just graduating, but be successful in their uh, job. As a faculty member, indeed, uh, in, uh, this is a very good point to have in the policy potentially of the university. Do you have any kind of quota potentially for women at, uh, in the faculty? Do you no, no, the, there is no quota. I mean, there is no quota, but uh, uh, as I, uh, I'm noticing that in the last years, the number is increasing. You know, when you hire a professor at the faculty, uh, uh, it, it's for us, it's not important to be a man or a woman. We are looking for the best to hire at the university. But uh, I was the dean of faculty of sciences, and I noticed that the number is increasing with time. M maybe as uh, Professor Zafra mentioned, uh, 10 years ago, uh, maybe we have only two to three percent uh, from the whole stuff uh, and, uh, from women's, but nowadays the, the number is increasing much larger. Uh, and in some departments, maybe the number of women is uh, almost equal to, to that of men. Okay, okay, very good. So maybe Andrea, so you had a, a question as well related or comment, or is it an own hand? Oh, no, no, it's. Okay, very good. Okay, so and then maybe for Alan, and uh, so Joe is not there, but uh, this is an important point as well that I've mentioned for the chapter with the APS to try to open as well potentially uh, in Palestine. I think it, it's really an interesting way that could have an impact as well for I mean, every level of education within the Middle East and encouraging also, I mean, knowing this is what is wonderful to have this internationalism. With, I mean, with Israel, Palestine, as you said, and Jordan, so one shot for each of what to explain that phrase, it's really recommendable as well to, uh, to live with those things. And then from Turkey, maybe there is as well a bit more that uh, could be added, Erkan, <laughs> or as well. So from, from your point of view, looking at uh, the, um, the diaspora, we can see it, or, or from the university that contributes. So you are from the American side, but I really like also the fact that uh, the, the California State University as well as sponsoring university. So are there more in that direction as well, trying to engage uh, uh, more of uh, the international university to sponsor? And maybe APS you could have the chapter, but you could create an uh, um, even bigger network and then get potentially then for apply it to the SESAMI, some identified uh, discipline and, and a beam line as well, why not? It could be as well good while writing those chapter that we could identify already some, some potentiality. So, and maybe Erkan could as well show what would be fundamental because you know both sides, this is what is good. So what would you advise for instance to prepare the student in Palestine to be able then to be more effective as well, to change the, the, the landscape as well of Palestine. What would they need from, from your know-how? Erkan, you are muted, yeah. You are muted, Erkan. I, I'm sorry, I'm not an expert in, in giving you a good advice, but some for practical terms. American Physical Society did try to form chapters, just like um, Zafra mentioned about uh, APS's chapters. It's um, difficult, all right? It doesn't succeed very often. And sometimes in advanced countries, there's a pushback because like German Physical Society is strong enough not to have any American chapters. 
and sometimes in the in the Middle East it can be considered as an ideological uh, uh, setback for for the society. So Amy Flatten has been trying very hard to expand the American Physical Society's uh, Forum on International Physics programs, and Alan knows this better than I do. It, it succeeds uh, sometimes in terms of travel grants and so on. But in general, there's a fundamental problem in the United States in terms of uh, relationship with Palestine has been strictly uh, restricted by the Congress. So it's not so easy to get them involved in more systematic sustainable programs. There is, of course, individual efforts from universities and professors and research centers trying to get bright Palestinian students, which there are many of them actually, uh, but there is no systematic program that facilitates this kind of exchanges, unfortunately. At least I'm not aware of. So in that sense, um, the program from Yuli is quite impressive actually, uh, because it provides a sustainable, systematic institutional contact and and i hope they can take advantage of that as much as they can because yuli is a fairly advanced engineering research center with good scientific programs with nobel laureates so i thought that was pretty remarkable that uh, this has been activated but um, us has uh, can do a lot more should do a lot more but uh, it's restricted can I just mention something, Christine? For sure, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, first, the American Chemical Society already has chapter and very active in Jordan, in Iraq, in UAE, in uh, uh, Qatar, in Saudi Arabia, and several more that are very active and they are, adding a lot of uh, many more chapters. So I think that the fact that there are already this very, and in Israel there is an ACS, and these chapters are getting together and helping each other. So from that point of view, American Chemical Society succeeded in being able to open. But I just wanted to say something about the Congress that the Congress through the uh, previous administration during Trump uh, banned any uh, financial aid to Palestine, but it changed completely when President Biden took office and USAID got a lot of money now to help Palestine and as a matter of fact, uh, there was now the Nita Lowry Act that was passed by the U US Congress of 250 million that were given now in order to work uh, in Palestine. So the, the change is drastically during this year and there is a lot of encouragement from the Congress to really work with Palestine. And uh, there is a group called All Map. It's Alliance uh, for Peace in the Middle East. They are the ones that got the $250 million to help uh, different projects in Palestine. And USAID just got, as a matter of fact, they, they have a big request for proposals now uh, to work both at the West Bank and Gaza. So this attitude of the Congress changed and with God's help, it will continue after the next election in 2022. So I just want to mention that I am involved with uh, some of this program. So the change happened immediately as President Biden took office. Thank you, Zafra. Yeah, that's wonderful to know that. And then maybe as well to follow up in terms of how this money will be used to make sure that uh, there will be as well uh, a sustainability action as well. Yeah, that they would very have... for proposals now. 
Yeah, so, so that's is, uh, really important to know. Yeah. Very good. Very we good. are submitting one, so therefore I know. That, so we, really we, have been, we have been trying desperately to get some money for Sesame from the Congress. And as far as I know, um, that's not coming through. So yeah. I'm, happy to hear, I'm happy to hear that USAID has succeeded getting money. And, and I will look okay. into with Andrea probably also would be interested. We will look into to see if um, what's in there. Uh, I think you are talking about the Bill Foster, the yeah. ten million dollars uh, yeah. into a much larger bill, but he did it before Biden was president, and I don't remember. I just talked to him about uh, this issue, so I happen to be knowledgeable with the Congress because I have a lot of contact with a lot of the members, but you are talking, but Bill Foster, uh, the Congress approved it because the Democrats were already in majority under uh, Trump, but it did not go any further. It was not the Biden administration. So everything is now completely different with the Congress. So it means that to renew as well, and maybe indeed, uh, so with Bill Foster to make sure that it could be directed towards some research infrastructure, because I'm sure that this is exactly what he would foresee, like one capability as well added in those countries so that they could be really for the employability and for everything, uh, something that uh, will be important. He's really into, for the VLHC, so he was really trying to push for those type of large scale. So Sesame should certainly be one of the, um, his mascots, yeah. But in the previous administration, even projects that already started, the money was removed because it was not allowed to give any penny for anything in Palestine. But all that is changed completely now. So... This is the situation now, uh, and uh, uh, they, they, I think a lot of money is going really into collaboration between West Bank, Gaza, and Israel. There is, I think, the two hundred. The USAID opened again an office, especially for uh, West Bank and Gaza, and they come up with calls for proposals all the time all the time. So yes, the situation is very different. And I want to give President Biden a lot of credit that he removed the ban immediately as he took office. Because we got stuck with the proposals that suddenly in the middle, they said you can't spend any money on Palestinians. So that's good to see that there is an evolution. So really so, important. So thanks a lot for, for doing and making also those initiatives being a true um, result uh, on, uh, on the developing community. And, and this is exactly what as well Galeb has been doing by those bridges, by making all those bridges, uh, making them more robust as well and getting as well the German uh, the governance as well being also effective. So it's really important the American side, maybe because in terms of quantity, uh, that will be certainly the, 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 the carriers as well of a lot of message for science diplomacy, but same way as well in Europe. I think that in Europe, we are really strong on that. We don't want any war anymore. We want really the peace everywhere from a geographical point of view as well. So, so this is why your bridge, maybe if you could maybe elaborate a little bit, uh, I don't know if this question or comment is on that, but to make sure that we know about your workshop, the workshop that you had with Daisy. So with other institutes uh, that also brought so much light uh, into the possibility to increase uh, so the, this, uh, this uh, community in Palestine. Yeah, I, I wanted to, to make two remarks. Uh, one is to Zafra to tell her, I find uh, the Malta conference an excellent idea. I'm very interested in this because you said it's combining efforts. It's uh, a key, issue, I think, uh, to combine all these efforts. It's very important to let the students have opportunity to 
to develop, to further develop, develop their skills, but also to build their networks. Uh, so I think this is important. We should stay in contact about this and continue. I will be more than happy to be in contact with you. Yes. The, the other point is uh, what uh, Christine just mentioned. Uh, around three weeks ago, we had a workshop between uh, the German Palestinian Science Bridge, the Palestinian German Science Bridge, and Sesame with the support of another Helmholtz Center in Germany with DAISY, uh, because we believe that Sesame, this is my second comment coming back to the topic of Sesame, uh, the natural uh, place where Palestinians can start their scientific career as long as there's a huge lack of research institutions in the West Bank itself. So it is not far away, it is already there. Uh, and therefore, I wanted also uh, motivated by the remark of uh, Dr. Moayad that he said he uh, does not know so much about Sesame to make the proposal to Andrea and to Moayad to, to have a next workshop or invitation of Palestinian professors or students coming to Sesame because what we did in the workshop is, uh, is the same. So we presented the different beam lines, the opportunities for students to the students and to the potential participants. And on the other hand, explain the potential that these students have, their background. And this can be repeated, can be done uh, between few Palestinian universities and Sesame. It should not be on the level of, uh, uh, say, university presidents, uh, but rather on the level of scientists or future scientists. So maybe we can organize or you can organize such a exchange of visits, information and workshop. We wanted actually to make our next workshop, Palestinian German Science Bridge workshop that we do one year in uh, Palestine one year in Germany, next time in Palestine with one day visit to Sesame with all the interested people. So I think uh, exchange of information telling the other side what is there will open the poten potential for development. And yeah, this is a good connection of our efforts. There is another German program that helps us to bring people it's the Van Humboldt uh, Foundation, and they have a lot of Van Humboldt fellows in uh, Jordan and in other countries, but they bring them to Germany uh, for research. And I don't know if many Palestinian applied to be Van Humboldt fellows. And this should be advertised because this is a wonderful program uh, for the fellows. And I, they are giving us money to bring fellows to the Malta conferences. But I don't know, uh, I always look for Palestinians to bring more and more to the Malta conference. And I don't know if, the, if many universities know to encourage uh, their scientists to apply for uh, this fellowship because then they spend uh, at least half a year in Germany doing research and then they support them all along. So this is a very important program for Palestinian scientists to apply to. I don't know if you are familiar with the Alexander Van Humboldt Foundation. So I yeah, think I'm... it should be really advertised in Palestine and encouraging the scientists to become fellows. Yeah. And visiting professor potentially as well. So there could be a lot of a form as well of support and exchange, I guess. But as you said, so Galeb, indeed, this workshop that you had is, is an excellent possibility as well for awareness, looking at what can be done in the system. And as well, the workshop that you had uh, with Desi might be registered in some sense. That's why I was mentioning also the maybe exchange from the digital point of view. They could be as well there some already 
some, uh, some, uh, some presentation and communication channel. It could be very interesting, maybe an advice as well for Andrea to make some little movie, like describing as well the, the capability of each of the, the different beam line. And then we could distribute it as well in also in Africa, because I know that we have some of our guests as well who are from the or involved as well with the African light source, as well as we know, and, and with different university as well. This is really the scientific case to try to to, to foster as well more interest uh, into the, the system. So commercialization as well of your product is an important thing. So that's what um, could be good. And uh, indeed, so Bernard, so you had as well raised your hand for quite yeah. some time. So sorry for just, having Just you. a few remarks in line with um, other people's comments this morning um, regarding collaboration and collaboration within the Middle East. I think that uh, it's important as well. I uh, just want to bring to your attention, and some of you may know about it, uh, an interesting um, initiative at the Arava Institute yeah. of Environmental Studies in uh, Southern Israel. And that is, um, essentially the focus there is on um, water, energy, food, um, shelter in uh, arid climates. And that's an area of research that I would say uh, the Arava Institute excels. And that's an area of research that I think more and more of us should be interested in because uh, of climate change and uh, the tendency toward the more arid climate. How do we live in uh, places where there's limited amount of water and so on? If you're not familiar with the Arava Institute for Environmental Studies, it cuts across water, food, energy, and so on, but also cuts across diplomacy. Uh, I would call it environmental scientific diplomacy as it brings uh, young people from uh, Palestine, Israel, Jordan, Egypt. They have tried to get people from Gaza as well. Uh, there are a few people from Europe um, and also a few Americans as well. All the courses are essentially uh, designed for people to interact around around water, around energy, around food in in in, in desert area. Again, I'm approaching the whole thing with an engineering hat. So, uh, from engineering point of view, we take science and we apply it. I think collaboration around issues that are common to the Middle East could go a long, long way as a form of science diplomacy and engineering diplomacy. Let me give you another example of a study or a, a, a workshop I, I, I did organized in 2010 and 2011. It was not in Malta, it was in Cyprus. In Cyprus, someone gave me some money and I brought together 40 people from Engineers Without Borders Israel, Engineers Without Borders Palestine, Egypt, uh, uh, jo uh, Egypt uh, Jordan, uh, Lebanon, and, and we all converged uh, in Cyprus on the island. We all got stuck on, in one hotel and for one week we sat down together since we were all engineers, we say, well, what can we do together? What can we do in, in our respective countries and regions and so on? It was fabulous. Not only it was fabulous from an engineering and scientific point of view, it was also fabulous from a friendship point of view. People danced together, sang together, uh, something that, you know, it's not, I, I wish the media had been there and would have been able to capture the camaraderie and the fellowship that was there. And, we talked about various projects. Most of those projects did not happen, but that was not the goal. That was the goal. It was bringing people together with the same vision about essentially the Middle East and collaboration across the Middle East around issues again of water. Water is number one, number two, number three. You know, um, what is water is transboundary. I've been uh, looking at a, um, uh, a basin called the Hebron Basar Wadi Gaza Basin. Well, it starts from Hebron. That water goes into Israel, crosses the Bedouin communities, and after that goes into Gaza. Believe me, your clean water becomes my dirty water, and vice versa. So water as a common ground is an example, and then we're talking about the entire science of water, the engineering of water, the outreach aspect of water is bringing students into doing some real work in the field. And that's what I think engineering has to offer. Um, that to me is a way of bringing people together. 
it's a form of science diplomacy. And I do believe that science and engineering, um, if done well, uh, as long as it's practical, uh, uh, science and engineering provides a way of bringing people together, at least in the region. Um, and um, I can expand more on what of the things we did in 2010 and 2011. We ran out of money because nobody believed in what we were doing. Of course, that's usually the case when you try to start something new. Um, but there are some unique initiatives that, that can be done. And the young people today, stepping into the young people, you know, the young people have observed that with engineers without borders, they want to change the world yesterday. And we better listen to them and bring them in our various forums and workshops and, and what have you there, because they have something to say and they are ready to walk the talk. So just want to, to emphasize that um, I applaud all your initiatives there, but if at least from an engineering point of view, if I want young people to come to collaborative initiatives, I need to show them how they're going to be engaged, what they're going to do from a practical point of view, not talk about science all day long. I'm not saying that's what you guys are doing, but from a practical point of view, you're going to attract more people to your initiatives than just talk about you know, the future of science in the region there. The region they have some unique problems that are not geopolitical, they are environmental, um, they are uh, uh, societal, uh, uh, and, uh, and all that represents a unique platform for collaboration. Thank you. A platform of collaboration without borders, and it really recalls as well this conversation we had with uh, uh, this multidisciplinary way as well of seeing ecologic, as, as you said. So, with the case of the water, this was a perfect example, and uh, to recall this the campus for the, the transition, and that uh, we know about in Paris, where this idea of getting as well uh, another view as well on a problematic uh, is very interesting, and they are very interesting as well to see on the cultural point of view how those problems problematic as seen. So how the Middle East would see this problem as well of the water by involving the university directly in Palestine could be another vision as well. And then we could do as well with those research, pointing at some way to make some measurement that could then be done with the sesame or trying to understand how to find a way to solve some of the, the quality of the soil, for instance. And this is part of what they're already doing in the sesame. So, so there is a way to relate everything by, as you said, like what Zafra and, and you did, Bernard, gathering people around the same table. So you, you are leaving, Zafra, or, or you I want to speak? Yeah, but I think I talked about the Arava Institute. So I, I want to emphasize again, we work very closely with the Arava Institute for 20 years. And I, this year, a few months ago, the Arvai Institute uh, has a new executive director who is Palestinian. The Arvai Institute is in Israel, but the head of that is a Palestinian. Uh, I just, I, I think that I want to take for a minute just to tell you about the Malta conferences because we are 20 years in the business and we include all the countries from the Middle East, Iran, Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, Israel, Palestine, all the Middle East and Morocco and Pakistan ask to participate. Uh, we are going to celebrate the 10th anniversary of getting together, but the collaboration is going on for many years. Uh, the issue of the water is a very important issue. And we have a lot of collaboration, but we are not the only one. There are a lot of groups that work on water in this area. It's usually including Israel, Palestine, and Jordan. And uh, we managed to get a grant to bring professors and students to the Weizmann Institute in a joint grant to work on water purification. But we have a lot, a very uh, big collaboration that is going on already for many, many years, but we are not the only one. Water is a subject that a lot of people are working on 
and a lot of money spent on this uh, issue. So uh, I agree uh, with Bernard that water and energy are extremely important subject because our main collaboration is on water and energy for the last 20 years. So, but uh, when we finish a Malta conference, as I said, we have all the countries there. It looks like an end of a family reunion. We don't want the media there because if the media will be there, a lot of people will get in trouble because of the interaction. So we don't really <laughs> want media to come and see because we have to protect people when they go back home. So this is just, I wanted to mention something about the multi conferences. We have by now 700 scientists in the network and 16 Nobel laureates. And that's really, really recommendable. And, and indeed, maybe to, to follow up as well on the deliverable from what you managed to achieve as well. So this can be public, even if the pictures cannot be public. Uh, so uh, Zappa, that's yeah, there are a lot and of pictures of the back <laughs> of bank of people. <laughs> but but you, as a group, we take a picture of everybody together. And, but it's because it's a big group. It, uh, much harder. But for example, uh, I got a request from a few people from different countries to remove the pictures from our website. Because, because and uh, I don't want to elaborate more, but uh, we, we had few participants that got into trouble for interacting with other countries that their country did not want them to interact. And it's mainly Israel. So the Lebanese, the Lebanese, we have to be very careful. The Iranian, we have to be very careful. So, uh, but they are all there together. And we have collaboration because we had many a Malta conference in between for the people to discuss the collaboration in a neutral place. So mm -hmm. I cannot yeah. describe in two minutes, 20 years of effort. <laughs> this and years of effort uh, that uh, made uh, the difference as well. So, and, and indeed also one important, for instance, um, with our common denominator with Adayona as well, as you were mentioning her, and she's as well with the Sesame from the beginning as well of the experience right. or right. also of the actor. So right. it's very important to see how this science diplomacy can, can help and, and push. And, and we know you as well, so with Alan, so thanks to all your activities as well uh, with, uh, in uh, all the, the effort uh, with um, with the American Physical Society, with but with all the, the um, I mean anything that uh, you do is directed towards uh, the improvement as well. Of One of the work. big problems is to find the country that will give a visa to all this group. We have the a visa lot of country is a problem. Visa yeah. issue mm -hmm. like for Syria, for Iran. Uh, very hard problem <laughs> to get the visa. It's still the last minute. We don't know if they will come, but you need connection really on a very high level. Uh, like in Malta, it's uh, the prime minister, the foreign minister and other ministers that at the last minute, people get the visa stamped in their passport while they learn because they cannot get the visa otherwise. And uh, many countries don't want all our group. And that can be so for indeed your guests, but as well for students. So that's one of the things potentially as well that could help to know exactly how all the governance uh, can, uh, can help as well with that. Uh, and, and indeed, I, I wanted to, to mention as well the Sakharov uh, uh, connection as well with the science diplomacy that uh, brought you as well and pushed you as well in, in this effort. So that's really recommendable. So we will have uh, maybe just one last uh, question as well, a comment by Andrea, because indeed the, the time is turning. So Andrea, so you wanna, you wanted to mention another comment with you're your- muted, You're muted. Andrea. I just wanted to 
put a little a, 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 a little effort in doing something uh, for a webinar or a seminar, but most probably a webinar given the time uh, and, the, and the wave which is rising still in Jordan and I, I fear also in Palestine in this moment, uh, that we would like to have it uh, as soon as possible because in April uh, we are going to deliver the next call for proposal. So if uh, if we could have this in January or in February, that would be better in order to uh, uh, put in phase uh, the uh, the scientists to deliver proposals uh, for the next call of Sesame. So we just had one, two, three weeks ago one seminar for Palestine, and I will have one for Turkey and one for the uh, Association of the Arab University next week. And then uh, we will continue in January with other, but one for Palestine can be repeated uh, possibly with the participation of uh, uh, your group who, who has sent someone to do measurements uh, in Sesame, who they could explain what 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 was done there, and uh, uh, not to have just the voice of Sesame, but also the voice of of Palestine in the webinar, and uh, uh, and from that we then we we continue and go on. What do you think? Would that, would that be possible? Professor Dusa, I think it could be, and maybe as well with the support of uh, of Caleb. So, what do you think? Yes, uh, sir, I believe that we need to have, as the Professor Ghalid mentioned, a meeting uh, uh, with the different scientists for CSME. I believe that most of the scientists don't know that much about CSME. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, there is a committee and there are some representatives from uh, some of the best universities, but uh, other scientists don't have that much knowledge about system. So I prefer to have a meeting uh, in the level of scientists. Uh, I can arrange this uh, with you, with Professor Ghalid, and I, I myself will, uh, will connect uh, people from physics, chemistry, engineering, and all, the, all these areas uh, to join uh, this uh, important meeting. And I prefer to do it in January or February, this is important before the next coming call because we don't have that much idea about it, actually. Okay, very good. So there is at least a plan. So first the meeting to try to better understand the SESAMI and then everything that will gather for this workshop. Uh, yes, yes, I will add to the professor as well. Yeah, that, uh, that makes sense. Huh? So I think that we are about to finish. So thank you so much for, for your attendance and for your passion. So, uh, maybe a, a last word from our chair, huh? so Alan, and we know that this is wonderful that we are all still connected and in general for everything that we are doing as well, it's so important to get the possibility to go further as well in this, uh, this uh, direction for developing community and this is certainly what Alan is really pushing a lot for. Well, I want to extend uh, my thanks to all of the participants, not just in the panel, but also the audience, and to Christine in particular, who has been uh, uh, doing a, uh, a fantastic job with Physics Matters to convene people. What I heard was that this is a bridge building project. Uh, you already, uh, uh, in Palestine, you already have the Ulick Bridge and, uh, and the uh, Canadian Bridge. And now, you know, I, I, I made a notation of about 10 additional bridges that can be built uh, based on, on the collaborations I heard about. So thank you. So it's an octopus somehow. <laughs> yes. <laughs> a strong, robust octopus. <laughs> and engineeringly as well speaking, so we make it um, very... Um, uh, sustainable, Bernard, isn't it? Because you are mastering all of those aspects. So wonderful. So thank you so much for, for your attendance. And as I mentioned, so maybe I will clearly just share the screen to show the next edition that we will have 
uh, so not before next year. So here we will gather some more scientists around uh, some new material with the graphene. And in this uh, next presentation, which will happen at the end of January, we have to fit the time with Singapore because our guest speaker so will uh, come from uh, so Singapore, so from Professor Kassan uh, Nato, who is an expert in that domain, as you can see from all of that. And that way we can further connect as well the, um, Occident the Oriental and the Occidental world so together. So I think it will be very uh, interesting and an exciting moment as well. So uh, in the meantime, so I think this is uh, the time as well for starting to think about soon vacation, the end of the year, trying to make sure that we finish on time everything that we still have to be completing for 2021 and then have some wonderful time and resting and getting uh, a new start of the year with uh, plenty of new projects uh, and uh, building even more capacity for Palestine, for Israel, for Jordani, for all the Middle East, but as well for uh, the, the African side and then the um, the, the, the occidental uh, aspect is, of course, uh, always welcome with those novel development that uh, can bring us. So thank you very much. We have indeed in our attendees some really important person as well. I see that Tenzi is connected. So thank you very much. So CERN is a driver as well in all those development for, for the, the community, like for the CSME as they did, but as well for the, the, the Southeast Europe, uh, different development for the, the proton therapy and any other uh, different an initiative that could help a lot. And again, connecting university together with uh, uh, the industry is still something that I think could benefit and all of that thanks to research infrastructure. So this is like uh, making sure that uh, there is the, a sustainable model for all of those development. No? So thank you very much. And uh, so I have a, a greeting season. We cannot say Merry Christmas, maybe. I don't know how you say it in your language but mainly to, to, to show as well indeed that there is a, indeed not a, a woman or a man scientist or an Israeli or Palestinian, but then that we are all scientists and we are all like uh, looking for the best cause as well. So thank you very much for your attendance and looking forward to hearing from you in the future. Bye. Thank you, thank you and bye-bye. Happy New Year. Thank you. Bye.